right, here we are outside of the Magic Kingdom, and today is something really special. We're gonna do the Fab 50, which are all of these statues uh, to commemorate the 50th of the Magic Kingdom opening up. So we're gonna go right in line with Disney Food Blog's map and hit all of the statues. Now, mind you, not all of the Fab 50 get their own statue. There's many characters with shared statues. First one is gonna be up here in the hub, over on the left-hand side. We're gonna go right into Lady and the Tramp is your very first statue you see. Check out the first of the Fab 50. This is Lady and the Tramp. And if you didn't know, Lady was actually based on Joe Grant, one of the animators, actual English Springer Spaniel, so not a Cocker Spaniel. And then Tramp was named after Walt when they couldn't figure out a suitable dog name. So Walt actually named Lady and the Tramp. Give some love to uh, Tony's Town Square. Nobody, nobody enjoys it anymore, but got some good food and they've got some really cool things for the 50th particularly for the kids that cotton candy fire that they put out with lemonade very cool all right the next one of the 50th statues are chip and dale and all these ones are going to be around the hub and uh, chip and dale first appeared in 1943 short private pluto which means that they're 78 years old and uh from the 1950s they took a brief hiatus until they did rescue rangers back in 1989 so but long-standing great characters. So over here we have Daisy, which if you didn't know in 1937 her original name was Donna Duck. And speaking of name changes, Mr. Donald's not name change, but did you know he has a middle name? It is Fountleyroy. So Donald Fountleyroy Duck. There you go. Looking cute. Here's our next dynamic duo. First up, we got Pluto, which if you didn't know, Pluto almost never talks, but he did speak in the 1931 short, The Moose Hunt, and he actually said, kiss me. Uh, fortunately, they decided to discontinue that because it was just kind of for a silly laugh and they didn't think it really added context to him. And then you have Mr. Goofy here. Uh, Goofy's original name was Dippy Dog. And personally, Goofy is my favorite of the Fab Five, particularly because he's a father, and he's the only one that actually has a son, or a kid in general, and uh, as a single father, takes care of him, puts him through college, and, uh, and has two jobs all the while. So, he's a great dad, great father figure. I always love Goofy. And there's the Castle Views, looking great for her birthday. All right, the most iconic of all of the Fab 50, we have Mickey, AKA Mortimer Mouse. Luckily, Walt's wife was able to convince him to change it to Mickey, but remember, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was first, and then we have his love, Minnie, who, uh, if you didn't know this, not only does she have Figaro the cat, but she also has a dog, it's a Pekingese, called Fifi, and from 1974 all the way to 1986, she didn't say a word on camera, which is kind of crazy to me that many years. Let's celebrate the shortest of the full feature movies at 64 minutes long. And if you didn't know, the circus where Timothy and Dumbo perform, it's called the WDP Circus for Walt Disney Productions. And uh, originally, Timothy, though, wasn't a mouse in the original story. He was actually a red robin. So these best of friends, A.A. Milne's creation, are Winnie the Pooh and Piglet, and we've moved over here to the outside of Crystal Palace. But if you didn't know, these, uh, Winnie was actually the teddy bear of the author's son, who was actually named Christopher Robin, and he named Winnie after the London Zoo Black Bear, uh, who was originally named Winnipeg, and uh, eventually became nicknamed Winnie. And Piglet, if you didn't know, everybody kind of knows that uh, Winnie the Pooh's favorite food is honey, 
Uh, I didn't know this, but Piglet has a favorite food. It's acorns. And then the other more shocking one, who he isn't here, but Tigger's favorite food is going to be extract of malt. Who knew that? Arguably one of the harder ones to find is going to be Tinkerbell over here, which if you didn't know the origins of Tinkerbell's name. Well, Tinkerbell was named after a tinker or a tinsmith who originally as a fairy character she was supposed to work on pots and kettles and the name Bell is because she was originally supposed to just communicate via Bell, which is how it is in the original play. But yeah, she's a she's one of the harder ones because she's up here kind of hidden. Very cool. this side of the castle, you'll see our dynamic duo of Jacques and Gus Gus, which if you didn't know, Gus Gus's actual name is Augustus, so it's short and actually stands for in Latin, worthy of respect, which is kind of funny because he gets misnomered as the, the fat, dopey one. And then you have Jacques over here, which is, of course, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> I um, short for Jacques. And uh, they actually speak a different language. All right, we've moved around in Magic Kingdom. There's the purple wall. We're in Tomorrowland. There's Tomorrowland Terrace. And here we have our Stitch Fab 50, which if you didn't know, Stitch was never supposed to speak English at all. And then they realized at the end of the story, he needs to convey a little bit more emotion. So. Chris Saunders, the director who was doing the the voiceover work just in the test, so they decided to just keep him so he actually voices the character. And oddly enough, Lilo and Stitch might not have taken place in Hawaii. They were thinking about originally putting it in Kentucky of all places. Oh, that would make uh, Lilo and Stitch a lot different for me. I like all of the Hawaiian aspects of that movie. <laughs> moved over here to Adventureland to go see our buddy Abu, which, fun fact about Abu, is originally in the, the story, he's a blind beggar, but obviously animators wanted to have something a little bit more fun to work with, so they decided to use a monkey instead. And it was from an original film called The Blind Thief. Wait. Strike that, I'm an idiot. It's called the Thief of Baghdad. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, um, I'm doing all these and I haven't really taken any breaks and it's super, super hot out, but I researched everything and put it in my book so I'm like reading them as I go and sometimes, especially this one, because I have to like look up and do it, totally goof that one up. So who doesn't love a good ad from the 1970s Florida Citrus Commission. Uh, this was originally a sponsorship for the Tiki Room, and he actually has his own record album and also a bunch of cartoons and shorts. And this was back when Sunshine Tree Terrace, or Sunshine Tree, wasn't located over here. It was where Aloha Isle is all the way down there. But I think he's just one of the best, coolest uses of an ad for oranges ever, or just an ad in general. I mean, they decided to uh, essentially make something to promote and sponsor, but be an actual brand, which is one of the most iconic cult followings in all of MK, and ad for oranges, love that. Super, super crowded at Aloha Isle. Gonna grab the Tropical Serenade, which is coconut dole whip over, it says pineapple juice, but I've heard it's also sometimes served with pog juice, and it has a pineapple upside down cake pop with it, but it is slammed. It took me 25 minutes to get called, and I got probably another 10 minutes in line before I get served. It is so packed here that I had to go to one of my hidden spots. I'm not even gonna tell you where it is because there's always cold shaded seating here and I don't want everybody to just dominate this place. But if you know, you know. I ran over here from Aloha Isle and I'm gonna tell you right up, 
I used to think that the Kakamore float was the best Dole Whip variant hands down, but now I actually think that this, which is the Tropical Serenade, is better than that. It has a pineapple upside down cake cake pop and pog juice and coconut Dole Whip soft serve. It's absolute perfection with the pog juice. It's because, you know, pineapple juice is so acidic. The pog juice is a nice blend of everything, but has all those tropical fruits and that sweetness, and it cuts that coconut. Richness. Time to try the cake pop. Mmm. Toasted coconut on the outside. So. That's actually the only disappointing part is I just got kind of like a undercooked dough ball of cake. Not a lot of icing. I like the coconut on the outside, but not a lot of pineapple on the inside. But the float itself is great. Just the cake pot is a letdown. I still like it though. I'm gonna go 3.9 because that cake pot took it down, which is such a shame because everything else is perfection in this. So good. All right, so here we are in Fantasyland with Pinocchio, out just outside of Pinocchio's Village House. I don't know if you knew this, but it took hundreds of artists many years to make the animation for Pinocchio. At the time, there was over seven to 800 artists working at Walt Disney Studios. And the original name for Pleasure Island was actually called Bogey Land, which just basically translated to Silly Land. Just outside of the Friar's Nook, we have Cogsworth and Lumiere, which if you didn't know Cogsworth, he's that pendulum clock. He's actually the major domo, which means the head servant of the Beast Castle, and Lumiere, which is translated in French as the light, uh, originally had a girlfriend who wasn't Fifi. Her name was actually Angelique. She was a... Old flame. Get it? <laughs> And of course, you know, my absolute favorite has to be the Mad Hatter over here. And did you ever notice that he has that fraction, that 10 slash 6? That actually denotes a price. So 10 6 is 10 shillings or 6 pence. And I did some math for you. Uh, nowadays, it'd be $32.87 pounds or $44.74 American. Pretty cool. And he looks great. Mr. Cheshire Cat, which if you didn't know, the Cheshire Cat is actually a particular breed of tabby British short hair. And there was a saying, uh, grinning like a Cheshire Cat, and that's because Cheshire is a county in England that apparently a bunch of cows that make good cheese and milk, so apparently these cats might have been getting in there and having a good time, or the molds that made the cheese look like a cat grinning. I'm gonna to try to see if I can find some pictures online of it. Well, success so far, getting all the characters here. I think there were 16 total statue pieces, uh, but we are headed over to Epcot to get the next few, and then it's Animal Kingdom, and then we'll finish up with Hollywood Studios. But we only have 14 statue pieces or spots left, so half, more than halfway there. Figment is one of my favorite, favorite characters, but here's a couple fun facts about him. One, his name actually comes from Magnum P.I. where there was an episode where Higgins was getting his grass eaten by a goat and Higgins says, Figments don't eat grass. Uh, so that's where his name comes from. And then the reason why he's colored purple, originally he was green, but Kodak, a major sponsor, said it was too much like Fujifilm. And that's the reason why he is purple and wears a sweater that is yellow and red Kodak's colors. All right, here's Miguel and Dante, and one cool thing about Miguel is he's actually playing real chords throughout the entire movie, so that actually kind of looks like a bard chord, some sort of F maybe, not sure. And then there's Dante, which is a, and part of my pronunciation, it's X-O-L-O, -O, so it's Zolo, which is a hairless, usually toothless dog, and it's the national dog of Mexico. So here we got Rocket and Groot. One thing you didn't know is Rocket's actually a robot uh, or was made by robots so he can live a lot longer than regular raccoons and he's one of the few people that can actually understand Groot even though Groot only has three words. Originally he 
I spoke many words. Um, and Groot, although cute, originally was to come to America, or at least Earth, and hunt down humans and run experiments on them. Fortunately, that didn't happen. Here's Olaf and Bruni, which, if you didn't know, Olaf was originally supposed to be an evil sidekick of Elsa. Uh, fortunately, they made him the fun sidekick of Anna. And then we have little Bruni, who was actually named by Olaf, uh, but originally his name was supposed to be Sally for Sally the Salamander. Here's Hei Hei and Pua, which Hei Hei actually means chicken in Maori, and uh, which is an island language. And he's also considered one of the stupidest of all characters in all of Disney. And then Pua, sadly, was cut from a lot of the movie. And uh, the origin story is that Moana found him and he was very, very sick, nursed him back to health, uh, and then he became a pet. But then he eventually gets cut from a lot of the movie because he wouldn't really fit that well on a raft and wouldn't survive, so. And uh, Hei Hei is a bantam rooster, which is a it's very specific type of rooster with that coloring. All right, so we finished all of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine characters that are in there. We are headed over to Animal Kingdom. There's only, I think, four spots. And then the last but not least is gonna be Hollywood Studios. It's also my first time doing the four parks in a day challenge, which it's pretty exhausting. <laughs> All right, here we are at Animal Kingdom and we're gonna go right into our first one over here. It is Dory and Lima. And if you didn't know, Nemo is named after Jules Verne's Captain Nemo from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It's actually Latin for no one. And then Dory was originally supposed to be a male royal blue tang, but when the director, Andrew Stanton, heard Ellen DeGeneres' voice while his wife was watching the show, called her up and asked her if she would be the fish, and that's why we have a female Dory. And over here, which awesome framing with the tree of life in the background. You have Simba, Timon, and Pumbaa. Simba, of course, means lion. Uh, Pumbaa means foolish one. And here's the one that really freaks me out is Timon. Actually, his full name is Timon Leslie Berkowitz. I kid you not. And apparently he's one of the few animals that actually walk on their back legs during the entire Lion King. He does occasionally go on all fours, which is pretty much how meerkats are the majority of the time, but I had no idea he had such a full name. And then we have Thumper and Bambi, which uh, Bambi is named after the Italian Bambino, which means child, and he is Originally was a roe deer, and now he got turned into a white-tailed deer. And then we have Thumper, the rabbit, which Roger Rabbit actually says that he has an uncle named Thumper, so we don't know if there's uh, some relations there. And uh, coincidentally, rabbits only thump their feet when they are nervous, not happy. So, just got off Kilimanjaro safaris real quick. It's not gonna be the entire one, but just quick snapshot. You're gonna get a chance to see uh, Dash and the entire dazzle of zebras. Dash is a little baby that was just born. And then also baby Humphreys, who was uh, the new giraffe. And then an entire tower of giraffe. It's actually the most giraffe I've ever seen. There was probably close to 10 or 12 of them all in one corner, which is, uh, terrifying so I guess they call it a Tower of Terror. Thank you.
So that's not going to call it yet. We just finished up Animal Kingdom. Going to head over to Hollywood Studios to round out the not only the four-park challenge, but all of the Fab 50 statues we would have checked out. But I wanted to just show you guys this gorgeous, gorgeous sunset over Animal Kingdom. Sadly, they don't do safari rides this late. It would have been gorgeous. All right, off to studios. Welcome to the best lit park at night. Hands down, the best lighting. Well, what are we doing? We are finishing up the Fab 50. We only got a handful left, and they're right up here in front of me. So I know BB-8 and R2 are up here on the left-hand side, so I'm gonna go there first. And then it's Frozone and Joe and oh, I think there's one more. I can't remember the last one, but let's get her done. All right, here we have the one and only Frozone, also known as Lucius Best. And a fancier way of saying that he can freeze stuff is he has cryokinetic abilities. Here is Edna Mode. Edna is famous because she is one of the few Disney characters that was actually voiced by a man. Brad Bird, the director, actually did her voice. And Mode is both German and Dutch for fashion. So BB-8 over here was a fully functioning prop and he had no CGI at all used on him the entire time they filmed. And Mr. R2-D2 is the only character to be used in every single one of the Star Wars films. And most notably, Ken Baker was the gentleman inside the droid. So our buddy Joe here, they mirrored the exact movements of the musician John Baptiste to even the finger motions when they were doing any of the musical sections for Joe. And apparently Joe was a part of a hip hop group in his youth, but he was super, super embarrassed about it. <laughs> so here we have Flounder and Sebastian. Flounder originally wasn't gonna be Ariel's companion. Instead, a dolphin named Raker was gonna be him. And he is actually not a flounder. He's actually a Sergeant Major fish. And then Mr. Sebastian, uh, he, in the animated series, will have white eyes, but if you notice in the merchandise, his eyes are actually going to be yellow. And the line, teenagers, they think they know everything. You give them an inch and they swim all over you. That was ad-libbed by the great Samuel E. Wright. All right, the last and final two, we have Bo Peep and Woody. Uh, fun fact about Bo Peep is she mainly doesn't go on most of the adventures in the first three films because she's made out of porcelain, making her less durable, so they didn't want her to crack, which is kind of funny because in the last film she goes crazy with parkour and all these risky moves. And then Woody uh, is the only Pixar protagonist who is the protagonist in all four of the films. And when Jesse meets him in Toy Story 2, she says, sweet mother of Abraham Lincoln, uh, Tom Hanks' mother is a blood relative to Nancy Hanks. So super, super crazy bloodline. I probably screwed up some of that, but 
And also, I love how they're actual toy size, which is a misnomer when you go into uh, Toy Story land, how big they are in comparison to how small we are, being the size of Green Army. And that's going to do it. That is all of the 50, the Fab 50 statues in one day. Little four part challenge in there, too. I hope you learned something. And uh, we'll finish you out. A little bit of the theater. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, man. Such a pretty park at night. Hope you had fun.